Washington Grown is brought to you by the Washington State Department of Agriculture's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program and the Washington Hospitality Association. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gordon, and welcome to Washington Grown. Our state is a star when it comes to producing sweet, delicious fruit like pears, berries, and apples. You can eat them on their own or baked into a sweet treat. In this episode of Washington Grown, we're talking all about dessert. We'll visit Fleur de Sel Crepery in Spokane, where we're making both sweet and savory crepes. She's doing a better job than I am. Then Tomas is out on the street to see what people think about satisfying their sweet tooth with dessert on a stick. Okay, he went back for seconds, <laughs> so that's a good sign. And we'll get a tour of Schwartz Brothers Bakery to see how their signature baked goods are made from the mixing to the frosting. I'm not even handling the frosting right yet. All this and more today on Washington Grown. Gotta go fast. Hot diggity. How good is that one? Yeah. Thank you. We're at Fleur de Sel Artisan Crepery, a spot in Spokane that is a little slice of Paris. Open for breakfast and lunch, here you can find both sweet and savory crepes. The savory very well and the sweet was delicious too. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Oh, I loved it. This is this is a real treat, is what it was. Uh, it's a place where people gather to have crepes. To have crepes. And only crepes. Only crepes. Yes. Owner Laurent Zerati and his wife Patricia own a successful French restaurant in Idaho and wanted to venture into Washington's food scene. They decided to provide Spokane with something a bit different, a casual spot that's all about crepes. What else more French than a creperie, right? Yeah. And a crepe. So, so we decided to do a creperie and uh, a great pleasure to, to, to bring something a little different to the, to the area, to the region. Uh, a little bit of a French flair. It was great. It's, it's something new to the area, uh, which I've never had a crepe in Spokane. The creperie is fun and colorful and ready to serve all ages and taste buds. You know, we bring something that is very casual, very affordable. The spectrum of our clientele is from young kids to the retired people. So we have a, l a big spectrum. Everybody loves Everybody crepes. Everybody loves crepes. Everybody. Coming up, Laurent and I will be making two crepes, one savory, one sweet. She's doing a better job than I am. This is not fair. can be found in different desserts across the world. Today I'm right outside of Yakima at Night Orchards where they are gearing up to start harvesting their 45 acres of pears. Kevin Knight is a fourth generation farmer and said that they grow up to 500 tons of Bartlett pears alone. And so when you when you get going harvesting these, um, is it all hand-picked? Did you have... Everything's, all, all our fruit is hand-picked. Really? Now why is that? Well, they haven't come up with a machine that's capable of matching <laughs> humans. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, for pears, you, you just pick them up. Show me how you can, is there one that you could show me? Is there a certain way? I can pick these. Oh, that's it. Yeah. So you just go up. And they like come that. right off. So what makes a good pear? What makes a good pear? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure there's as many opinions about that. As yeah, really? <laughs> to you, what makes a good pear? And like, look, looking at this tree, show me one. Well, Clean, not bumpy, mm -hmm. and you know they can't be tiny, but they don't have to be huge to process them. Right. So are these? Yeah, that'll be fine. This one's okay. Yeah. Kevin said he has a crew of 20 people to harvest the fruit, and it takes one person about 10 minutes to pick one tree. Why did you decide to grow pears? Well, the old adage is you grow pears for your heirs. Oh yeah. So I'm the heir. <laughs> So here we are. So here we are. We have we've got pears now. Yeah. So now why is that? Just because they Well, pears are one of the well, probably the only tree fruit that doesn't have a dwarfing rootstock. So it takes a long time to get a pear to grow and produce fruit. So how long have these mm. trees been around? But there's some of them that I've been told that were planted in the late eighteen hundreds. Since it seems that Kevin was destined to be a pear farmer, I asked him what he enjoys about farming. I like it. 
I went, I went to school and worked on my master's in engineering, but I'm not very good behind the desk. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be outside. Yeah. So this, that appeals to me. It's nice to watch stuff grow and, and the end product. Kevin said his pears are shipped to 50 different countries and can be found across the U.S. So if I'm in the grocery store, how do I know if a pear is ripe? You grab it by the neck. Okay. And you apply gentle pressure. Mm -hmm. And when it starts, it gives. It'll give a little. You give a little, it's And that's ripe. how you know. Yeah. Kevin explained that pears are firm when picked and ripen at room temperature. Then once they're ripe, they can be stored in the fridge for several days. So hanging out on your, on your counter until yep. you do the, the thumb test on the neck. Check the neck. Check the neck. Right there. I'm at Costco in Marysville, where my first stop is straight to the freezer aisle to pick up one of my favorite Costco products, the Three Berry Blend. There's a reason these best-selling berries are so sweet. They're all locally grown. I chatted with Costco buyer Becky Schmidt and farmer Andy Enfield to learn how Washington-grown berries end up in Costco products around the world. You grow berries. That's right. We grow and pack raspberries and blueberries and blackberries will okay. pack into the triple berry. So we're talking about the, the Kirkland the signature, signature three berry blend. Three berry blend. Mm -hmm. And some of them come from this guy. A lot of them come from him. All the raspberries and the blueberries and blackberries are coming from this area. That's awesome. Washington, Oregon. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. It is. It's really good for the industry. And it's uh, nice to have a partner like Costco that likes the high quality and yeah. uh, sees what we're doing up there. It's a good thing. And so you do all of the, we'll the packaging and everything. Yep. Wow. Right. It's kind of nice for you guys, yes. right? Yes. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> and we like that because he can control it the whole entire way. Yeah. He's able to, you know, see it out in the fields. He kind of gives me updates. He then freezes it, gives me more updates. He packages mm -hmm. it and then ships it on to us. And then I check it out regularly and then give him updates. So it seems like you guys have a good, a very good we working do. relationship yeah, we and do. you're... We do. Yeah. <laughs> There's a friendship. You know, we're a local Washington company. Costco's a Washington-based company yeah. and they're buying Washington fruit. Right. Um, I know, pretty, it doesn't get neat. much better than that. No. And so how popular is the the Kirkland Signature Triple Berry Mix. Uh, that's our number one fruit item. Is it really? Yes. Good job. <laughs> that's awesome. You Great flash berries. freeze them, right? I mean, flash it's... freeze them, yeah. And what it does that do? It takes about five to seven minutes and they're frozen. Wow. Yeah. So what's the benefit that of that? It just preserves all the vitamins and all the nutrients in them and preserving what Mother Nature produced yeah. uh, when it was at the peak of ripeness. They're really sweet, so a lot of times we actually get members asking if we've added sugar to really? it. Really? And they're always surprised sometimes when yeah. we're saying, there's nothing oh. but the fruit. Good Washington grown fruit. Yep, not just apples here, Mike. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Coming up, it's crepe time. We're in the kitchen at Fleur de Sel, making both sweet and savory crepes. She's doing a better job than I am. This is not fair. We're back at Fleur de Sel Artisan Creperie, where you can definitely feel the French flair. The restaurant serves both breakfast and lunch crepes from sweet to savory. The savory very well, and the sweet was delicious too. <laughs> so I like it. I like it a lot. Great flavor to it. It's been a, a great pleasure to, to, to bring something a little different to the, to the area, to the region. Uh, a little bit of a French flair. Owner Laurent Zarati and his wife Patricia take pride in their casual and simple spot and make sure each one of their crepes are filled with fresh and local ingredients. That was nice, good, good fresh ingredients and definitely come back. We use uh, berries, raspberries, strawberries when we can. We use also all the beautiful vegetables that are coming right now. And we make everything house made. Uh, the only thing we don't make is the Nutella. I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't found a recipe where I make it better than they right. do. Laurent is going to show me how to make both a savory and a sweet crepe. But before we head to the kitchen, he receives his weekly delivery of fresh produce from Dan at Link Foods. This week there are a variety of crops, including the veggies we're about to use for our savory crepe. Mm -hmm. Roasted vegetable, local, 
from the farm in Spokane. Is there anything I can do? Uh, do you want to cut a, a large uh. dice, that onion? Uh, why do I always get the onion? I don't want you to cry. <laughs> After I survived chopping the onion, I chopped some summer squash, patty pan squash, and zucchini. Laurent makes a mixture of olive oil, salt, and pepper and herbs. Then we add in our veggies to toss. So this is a good vegetarian dish. It's perfect. And if you don't want to make a crepe with that, you make an omelet, you make a salad, mm -hmm. you roast them, you cool them off, you toss them with a little balsamic vinegar because there is already, already olive oil. Perfect. Awesome. So, and don't be afraid, you use your hands. Okay, I'm gonna get in there. Go for it, you toss okay. them, toss them, toss awesome. them. Up. After they're tossed, we put our veggies in the oven to roast for about 20 minutes. While our veggies are roasting, we mix together capers, olives, sun-dried tomatoes, garlic, and fresh basil. You know, in food, uh, it's, it's uh, emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, it brings you memories. Yeah. I mean, all of us, we are the same, we function the same way. You have a smell, you have an aroma, and suddenly you have those memories. When our veggies are roasted and ready, we add them in the bowl and mix away. Now that our filling is ready, it's time to make the crepe. This okay. is called a bilig. Bilig? B-I-L-I-G. G. 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 Okay. G en français. And uh, so it's a bilig. This is the roselle. And this is the spatula. Roselle. Yeah. So this is how you turn it? You turn it. We, we, we're going to lay the crepes right now. Laurent hands over the roselle and I give it a shot. Let the weight of the crate to do. She's doing a better job than I am. This is not fair. There you go. Woo, I did it. <laughs> now we can fill the crepe with flavor. Laurent starts off by cracking an egg. Cheese. Yes, Parmesan and gorgonzola. Oh my goodness. The roasted vegetable. Do you have to work fast? With well, these, when you work one, it's fine. Mm -hmm. When you work four, four. you got to work yeah. fast. Traditional crepes, are they this big? They are that they big. They are that yes, big. Yes, oh, okay. you know, we, once again, uh, uh, in France, traditional crepes are from Brittany. They're made on a billet. Mm -hmm. The rest of France is like what we know here in the United States. It's the little pan, little pan that you flip. That you, yeah. and exactly, you know, oh, okay. you pour your batter you, and you, you make a little, a little crepe. So this is the way. This is the crepe. It's like a, it's like a French burrito, you know? Yeah, you know? <laughs> a French burrito. A French burrito. <laughs> Laurent finishes his French burrito by flipping and folding it. Then we top it off with a drizzle of balsamic glaze. Voila. 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 Now that we're done with the savory crepe, it's about to get sweeter. And we'll do kind of a classic, uh, a twist, you know? Uh, there's classic and you twist them around. Sure. Uh, called the poire belle Hélène. Oh, yeah. How do you say Beautiful that? Hélène. Oh, okay. Up here. It's a classic. It's usually in a cup. Mm -hmm. It is a, a vanilla ice cream, poached pear, chocolate sauce, topped with chantilly and almonds. Ooh, so we look, we look, we will all have that kind of, uh -huh. but in a crepe. But in a crepe. We start off by peeling and slicing our pears. We then caramelize our pears by sautéing them in butter and honey. Then we pour on another batter, and since we're making a sweet crepe, we have to cook both sides and then fold it in half. Laurent starts to fill the crepe by spreading some vanilla custard. Then we add our caramelized pears, a sprinkle of chocolate chips, and sliced almonds. Top it off with some whipped cream, powdered sugar, and cocoa powder. Our sweet crepe is complete. Voila. That's beautiful! A crepe poire belle Hélène. Oh, poire belle Hélène. Time to sample this sweet creation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Good? That's heaven. Yours is fantastic. Yours is fantastic, oh, too. We are fantastic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to get the recipe for Fleur de Sel's savory vegetable and sweet pear crepes, head over to wagrown.com. Did you know that Washington grows more pears than any other state in the U.S.? In 2016, Washington produced almost 350,000 tons of pears that were commercially worth $210 million. While pear trees are native to Europe and Asia, they can be grown around the world due to their resistance to cold weather. Bartlett, Bosque, and Danju are the most common varieties of pears found on store shelves, but all varieties provide similar nutritional benefits. 
one medium-sized pear contains only 100 calories, but almost 25% of your daily recommended fiber intake, which will help keep your digestive system healthy and will help lower your cholesterol. Pears are also packed with antioxidants, including vitamin C and A, the latter of which will help keep your skin looking great and reduce the effects of aging, like wrinkles. Pears are a good source of minerals, including copper and iron, which can improve your blood circulation and prevent fatigue. Pears are great when consumed raw as a snack or in a salad, but you can find many recipes for sauces and especially desserts that feature this nutritious Washington-grown fruit. Coming up, we'll get a tour of Schwartz Brothers Bakery to see how their sweet and delicious baked goods are made. I'm not even handling the frosting right yet. And we'll be back cooking with Laurent in the Second Harvest Kitchen, this time making a poached pear dessert. Hey, let's go! While food trucks are smaller than your average restaurant, it still takes a lot of love, sweat, and hard work to be successful. And My Sweet Little Cakes is no exception. This father-son duo worked countless hours to deliver us gourmet, sweet, and savory hotcakes. Hey everybody, I'm here with Jesse Lee and Elijah of My Sweet Little Cakes. You guys are doing something pretty darn unique. You're brewing everything on a stick, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So tell me the inspiration behind this. Well, we have custom waffle irons that are in the shape of corn dogs. And what we do is we start with seven of our gourmet batters. We pour a little bit of batter into that waffle iron shape, put a stick in it, and then we stuff it end to end with about four <laughs> ounces of artisan meats and cheeses or fruits and berries, another layer of batter, and then it file out, comes out like a corn dog on a stick, but without the deep fryer heavy grease. Well, here's what's awesome. These aren't, anybody could just throw something in a basket, but the way that you guys are doing this, man, there's some pride that looks, that looks evident here. Absolutely, yes. Uh, we believe that the presentation is, you know, everything. Now it's time to take these cakes to the streets and see if they taste as good as they look. All right, let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy desserts? I love desserts. Ooh, see, I, I do too, and I'm glad that you said that. Tell me some of your favorite desserts. Oh, I like flan. We love ice cream at our house. Okay. Uh, cheesecake tends to be one of my favorite desserts. A waffle on a stick. Waffle on a stick. You know, I'm yeah. glad that you happened to say that <laughs> because I just happened to have this delicious oh my, oh my. chocolate waffle on a stick. Why don't you give that a try and tell me what you think? Oh, look at that thing. Oh, look at that. This is going to be a little messy. <laughs> and that's okay. It's all right to have fun with your food. Look at that. Good job, dude. Mmm. Mmm. You hear that? That's all. You just need to hear. Mmm. <laughs> it's practically illegal to have all of this all on and on a stick, literally. <laughs> okay, he went back for seconds, so that's a good sign. Today I'm meeting with Lindsay Schwartz at Schwartz Brothers Bakery in Seattle to see how they make their delicious pastries, cookies, and bread. The first thing Lindsay shows me is their scaling and mixing room where all the ingredients are scaled and mixed so their products maintain a precise consistency. So what are these going to be? These are going to be Mary and Berry muffins. Okay. So there's another great uh, Washington fruit that we yeah. can use. You know, we try to automate as many things as possible because you want to have efficiency and, mm -hmm. and you want to get the right price to the customer. But we've also built our brand on, on really being an artisan bakery yeah. uh, and having that, that hand touch feel to it. So you can see here, uh, we actually literally top every single, every muffin with a couple berries and we do that by, by hand. hand. I wanted to get my hands dirty, so Lindsay took me over to the frosting station. And just a little swipe, yeah. not much. So like how much, like that, a little bit. Oh, no, I'm not even, I'm not even handling the frosting right yet. Oh, that was bad. Oh. More. Yeah. Better? Yeah. Am I fired? Yeah. I'm fired. She says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Since I was fired from my frosting job, we continue on with the tour. Okay, so this so. is where we do the fruit-filled danishes. Awesome. And uh, you can see that we're making the apple, which is Washington, uh -huh. Washington apples. We're a local bakery. Our customer base is local. And, and in the Northwest, in Washington, people like to eat local. They like to support local farms. And we're just so lucky, that, you know, where we live, we have an abundance of great, great fruit. So uh, we take advantage of it wherever we can. Next, the items are baked in the oven room and then placed in their cooling room before they're packaged and ready for delivery. It's awesome. called Schwartz Brothers because it was my dad and my uncle and they actually started, they started in the restaurant business in 1970 and then started a really small bakery in 1973. Mm -hmm. We mostly did pies back in the 70s. Okay. And, uh, and over time we just started to do more and more things and it just, it just took off from there. And look at those cool cookies. Right, that's something we're really excited about. So we are now an official partner of the Seahawks and uh, these are the official Seahawks cookie. And as far as we know, there's nobody else in the NFL that does a licensed uh, logoed cookie. And so eventually we'll see these. In time for football season, you should see them in all the grocery stores in town, drug stores, at the stadium. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. <laughs>
treat. Was it a treat? Have you ever had creme anglaise? No, I don't think I have. It's it's like, okay, you like eggnog? Y yeah. It's better than eggnog. It's better than eggnog. <laughs> we add the boiling milk to the eggs and sugar. After it's all mixed in, Laurent adds it back into the pot and continues to whisk until the cream gets to 182 degrees. We're going to let it sit a little okay. bit and then we're going to transfer it and put it in the fridge. Yep. Okay? Okay. After all of our elements have cooled, it's time to put it all together. All right, we have all the elements to, build, to build our dessert. We have so our this pear. is something that needs to be cold. Yes. You eat it yes. cold. So, so the pears are cooked. When they are poached, mm -hmm. you leave them in the poaching liquid. Do you put it and in the fridge? Or? Yeah, in the fridge. Okay, and then the, the cream the creme anglaise, here, the creme anglaise is, is cold, also cold. Okay. Also. And the cookies are cold as well. Okay. Awesome, okay. So we're going to do a little, uh, we're going to fan those pear. Oh, pretty. Cook them like this, put them, you see how beautiful mm -hmm. they are. I love how they absorb the color. Oh, the color is beautiful. Yeah, That's it's a beautiful. fall color. Right? We add a bit of creme anglaise and drizzle on a syrup that Laurent made from the leftover poaching liquid. We top it off with a coconut cookie and then our beautiful dessert is ready to try. Ladies first. Merci. De rien. Ooh. <laughs> I could drink gallon again of that creme anglaise, but mm. I don't think uh, mm. I would. I can really taste the spices in the, yeah. in the pear. Yeah. Laurent, you're the best. Um, you're the best. <laughs> We're the best. To get the recipe for Laurent's poached pear dessert, head over to wagrown.com. Washington fruits and berries are shipped all over the world to enjoy, and we are lucky to have it right in our own backyard. So no matter how you satisfy your sweet tooth, if it's made with Washington grown ingredients, you can bet it's going to be a sweet choice. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.